Hi everyone, um, mixed in with your 3.1, 3.2, um, we've got a little bit of stuff about inequalities. So I think it's a good fit because the steps are really similar, but I wanna go all the way back to the basics. So if you feel like you've already got the basics, feel free to skip over some of this. Um, but I know sometimes there's people that have gotten through and either have forgotten or have always had a little confusion with this notation. Um, so remember for inequalities, we have, people usually know about four symbols, there's really five. So we have uh, strictly less than, so A has to be smaller than B equal to does not work, um, a greater than b, a less than or equal to, so there equal to is okay, as it says in its wording, and a greater than or equal to b. The one that people sometimes forget is a not equal to b is really an inequality. It's not an equality, it's an inequality. Um, it's actually a simpler one. It behaves the way equal signs would in terms of solving, so it doesn't really give us much trouble. Um, but the other ones have a little bit of subtlety when you're solving. So remember that like equations, inequalities are complete statements. They're not expressions, they have a truth value. If a, okay, so for example, if we say two less than seven, that is a true statement. But if we say seven less than two, that is a false statement. So depending on the values of a and b that we pick, these can be either true or false statements. So we will solve, I'm doing air quotes to myself, solve inequalities, and that can look a lot like solving equations, but there are instances as well where it's kind of a different thought process. Um, let's see, we talked about interval a little bit, um, but let's look at it here. There, so this is inequality notation. Interval notation. Um, is kind of getting at the same thing, but what you do is you always just list, uh, how do I want to say this? I don't think it works in this example. We will work on it when we're solving equations. Without a number and a variable in the mix, it gets a little weird to talk about. But I can see this. Um, uh, inequalities don't have a specific direction that they have to go. So when we're looking at this last statement here, a is greater than or equal to B, that has the exact same truth values, solutions, as B less than or equal to A. So you can flip inequalities and still have the same meaning. Sometimes people get a little confused when they get something like 7 is less than X, so that's one where you can just flip everything, including direction, and say, okay, well, that really just means that X is bigger than 7. Or you can go like way back to the grade school thing. Think about this as the crocodile mouth, and the crocodile mouth always eats the bigger one, so X is bigger than 7 in that case. Um, we're also going to look at compound inequalities. For right now, I just want to throw in this pair right here because they're really nice, simple pairs. Um, if a less than b less than c is your statement, you can translate that as b is between a and c. So this kind of compound inequality, there are other kinds, but this kind only works if between makes sense. Uh, and then it's just a matter of are we including the a and the c or not including the a and the c in this. Uh, and just like before, you can completely flip that around and it still has the same truth values. So I'm going to jump in next, I think, to the graph. What does the graph of an inequality look like? And the interval notation. So let's go for it here. When you are graphing inequalities, you're just representing all the x values that make it true on a number line. And this will hold as well when we get to two-dimensional equations with x's and y's. When we graph the equation for a line, we're graphing all of the solutions to that equation. So in this case, it's just one variable. So this number line represents all possible x values. We are particularly interested in the x value 2. We know that if we choose any x value smaller than 2, our statement is true. So if I plug zero in, zero is in fact less than two, that's a true statement, that is a solution. If I plug in three for x, three is not less than two, that's a false statement, that's not a solution. So this is my graph. 
the alternative way to write this, and I really don't care which one you use, but you should be able to read both. Um, so what we have at the top is inequality notation. Interval notation uh, is a nice one as well. They both have strengths and weaknesses. Interval notation is a really direct translation of your graph. Um, so it ties in really perfectly. We would always say, okay, how far does our arrow go to the left? It goes to negative infinity. That's going to be our starting point. How far does it go to the right? It goes to two. That's going to be our ending point. Infinities always get a round bracket. The idea being you can't actually make it to infinity or negative infinity. Um, but two, this time we'll get a round bracket because it's that open circle or the strict less than, the strict inequality. If that was a less than or equal to, we would have filled that circle in and it would get a squared off bracket to show that the two was included. Okay, so let's go through a few of these so you have some to compare to. Uh, X greater than negative seven. Okay, so now we want negative seven to be our key value. So let's go zero, negative five. So negative seven would be around there. And again, we have strictly greater than, so we don't want to include 7, but anything even an infinitely small little bit bigger than negative 7 works. So negative 5 works, and 0 works, and all the way forever this direction works. If you tried to plug in negative 8, you'd get a false statement. Negative 8 is not actually bigger than negative 7, so that is not part of your solution set. To translate this into interval notation, again, you just mirror your graph, you always read left to right. So I'm going to start at negative 7. It's not included, so it gets a round bracket. I'm going to go to infinity. I can never get to infinity, so I give that a round bracket. Okay, and then a couple of equal to's. So y less than or equal to negative 100 on my number line negative 100. Um, I'm going to say, okay, negative 100 is actually a solution, so it now gets a filled in circle to show that I'm including that as part of my line. And then I want to choose all the y's that are smaller than that. So I'm going to go this direction. Negative 200 would make it true, negative 300 would make it true, and so on. But anything over here, like 0 or 100, would make it false, so they are not part of the solution set. This is a y. I think I forgot that on the last one, too. Let's peek at it. This was an x. Um, I probably won't pick on you too much now, but as we get into equations with two variables, it's going to become more and more important that you're labeling, so I can tell which is which. Um, okay, so interval, I'm trying to not call it the wrong thing, we would start at the left, the farthest left on our graph is all the way to negative infinity, always a round bracket on infinities, as you work your way to the right, the biggest value you hit is 100, and because 100 is included in the solution set, it gets that squared off bracket, so squared off brackets to include, rounded brackets to leave out, um, you can use square and round brackets on your graph as well, but that won't work when you get to two-dimensional graphs. So I tend to just go straight for the notation that does still work for two-dimensional graphs, which is open circles and closed circles. Okay, a greater than or equal to. Y is greater than or equal to root 2. So my Y is again. So this represents all possible Y values from negative infinity to infinity. Let's go ahead and put 0. 0 doesn't have to be in the middle. Um, but I'll do that a lot just to kind of have a point of reference for where I'm at. Oh, I started yawning again. I thought I was done. Okay, so let's see. Um, let's say this is 1 and this is 2 and root 2 is going to be somewhere right in here. So we want to include root 2 and then we want also to include anything bigger than that. So this is my picture. Um, you can always check yourself if you think you're getting mixed up. If I put a zero in, is it true? No. So I don't want to uh, go to the, whichever direction that is, left. If I put two in, that's absolutely true. So I do want to go to the right. Inequality. Okay, so interval notation. We're starting at root two and including it. We're stopping never, so we would say we go all the way to positive infinity, and we always give those infinities um, round brackets. 
Okay, last but not least, k does not equal 16. This is actually really easy to draw, but it sometimes mixes people up. You have to take that really literally. If the only statement you have is k cannot equal 16, then k should be able to equal absolutely anything else. So 15 makes that true, 17 makes that true, a million makes that true, everything makes that true except for 16. So if this is 0, let's say 5, 10, and then we'll be just past that, so it's 16. And we're going to do an open circle to show that that's not included, but we do want everything bigger, and we do want everything smaller. So something along those lines. Um, and make sure when you're drawing these that you make your arrow this part thick enough that I can really tell. Sometimes people, I think, have the right idea, but they draw it so light that I'm not actually sure where they're drawing their arrow or not. Um, so make sure that I can tell that from the number line. This is the one spot where inequality and interval notation, interval notation is actually longer. I can think of other places where inequalities longer than interval, but this is the only one I can think of off the top of my head where interval is messier and longer to write than inequality. Uh, the only way to write this in intervals, remember you're just describing the graph. So we start all the way to the left at negative infinity, and we keep going until we hit 16, and then we have to leave 16 out, but we want to start again at 16, not included, and go to infinity. So that's really the only way to do it, and I haven't talked about this yet. I will in the very next thing. Um, to hook those together, you would say union, which just means I want all the numbers in either one of those intervals, combine the two intervals to get me my um, entire solution set. So a simple, simple statement in inequality notation does become kind of a weird, awkward statement in interval notation. Okay, thanks for watching.